Listen, I find it near impossible to DNF series, so if a series is on this list, you know I really didn't like it. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the book series I won't finish. I won't do it. I won't do it. I think I'm tired in this video, the book series you couldn't pay me to finish, which I know sounds harsh. But a lot of you all know I'm really trying to finish as many series as I can this year. I'm trying to get my currently reading series down to the lowest number and we're already in dire straits. Like <laughs> it's already bad. And I really scratched my head and I wonder Where's God when you need him? So you couldn't pay me to add these books back onto my currently reading series and to add to that number. That's why it's titled that. But before we get into chatting about those series, I want to say a massive thank you to today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month, my favourites. <laughs> I love Book of the Month. I think it's such a cool service for readers online. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors, introducing you to new authors that you will love. They also though do a, do a good job of like, having repeat authors. So like, for example, if you have all of Lucy Foley's books or all of Ali Hazelwood's books in the book of the month editions, they usually have a few authors that they repeat as well, I find. As someone who tries to keep up with all the new releases that are coming out, I know it's really tough. And book of the month do that for you. You don't need to spend time looking them up, searching, scouring what are gonna be the big new releases this month. They find that out for you and they give you a selection of five to seven books every month to pick from, but it is risk-free. If none of those books interest you, you can skip a month, you won't be charged. So I think it's such a great thing to sign up for, to discover new books, to discover new authors. At this time, we need to be supporting new authors. And I always think Book of the Month is one of the best things out there at giving new and emerging authors a spotlight. They have the best price, and he say it, the best price for hardcover, new release fiction. You can get your first one for only $9.99 using the code MEGWITHBOOKS. Go check them out using my link down below and use the code MEGWITHBOOKS for only $9.99, a book probably $9.99, it's crazy, it's so good. So, the two books I chose this month. Firstly, I chose White Horse by Erica T. Worth. This is a horror book that sounds really interesting, and of course I'm trying to get into more horror, trying to get my hands on more horror. Our protagonist's cousin finds an old family bracelet that once belonged to the protagonist's mother. It inadvertently calls up both her mother's ghost and a monstrous entity. I also love the cover and like the vibes of the cover. It feels very like retro 80s almost to me. And then, <laughs> My mum loves the romance selections that Book of the Month give out every month. She loves them. Every every time <laughs> I get my Book of the Month package, she's like, have you picked one of the romance ones? And often I don't because there's two other books that excite me more, but she always gets really upset. So this month I did pick a romance <laughs> choice because I found it interesting as well. I think this is about a couple who have been married and they want to save their marriage and this is all about them rebuilding their marriage. And I feel like that's not something you see a lot in romance. It's often like people falling in love for the first time but I think it's equally important to tell stories of people falling back into love and and you know loving someone is a choice it's a decision you make and so I really like the idea of seeing that in more romance so yeah definitely go check out book of the month down below use my code make with books get your first book for only $9.99 okay so I have about 12 series here that I have DNF'd that I've left in the past we're gonna go in order of oldest to most recent DNF's because the more recent ones you probably have remember hearing me talk about about, but of course further back in past there was less of you here so it makes more sense to talk about those ones first. This is all of them apart from like series that I read or started for videos that I knew I was probably never gonna continue with the series like Kendall and Kylie Jenner's book or <laughs> book series that I read when I was a kid and I read the first book again but knew I wasn't gonna continue with the series. That kind of vibe I haven't included in this list but every other series that I have DNF'd we're gonna chat about. So I also have unhauled most of these books so <laughs> we'll have to have pictures. So the first one is the Oh, I kind of don't even know how to say it. Montague? Is that how you say it? Siblings by Mackenzie Lee. I read the first one, A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. This wasn't for me. <laughs> it's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. I can't see. I've gone shaky. So all I remember about this is that we're following a guy as he goes on like his rich boy tour of Europe <laughs> back in the day. I can't remember what the plot is of this, like what the inciting incident <laughs> <laughs> but I know we're following him and his friend and his sister. I know this series is LGBTQ friendly. Um, I remember finding the writing really annoying. <laughs> when I read this in 2020, it was still like 
a pretty popular series. I feel like it's died down a bit now, but it was still like a big, a big gun, you know what I mean? In, in, in the field, it was still a book that everyone loved. And I remember listening to the audiobook and I was like, oh no, oh girl. <laughs> Oh no. There was also some kind of controversy, I remember, with the author. I mean, listen, it was an awful long time ago, love, and I don't remember. <laughs> I, don't rem I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't. It was an awful long time ago. I don't hold on to every nugget of tea in my brain. But I remember she was, like, signing her name on other people's books, like, other authors' books, and, like, defacing them. I feel like there was something more extreme than that as well, like, more serious, but everyone just made fun of the book signing. I can't remember. Let me not say stuff that's not true. <laughs> but that was right after I read it and I remember just thinking I'm good we can leave that one in the past so I think that was the first series I ever properly DNF before that you know I am innately a finisher of series <laughs> I like don't like not ticking stuff off I feel like it's also tied into like I don't like unhauling I don't like getting rid of stuff I find that difficult so like it's all one big happy family <laughs> and so usually I make myself finish series but this was the first one where I was like I'm okay. Next is the Gumiho series by Kat Cho. The first is Wicked Fox. Now this one makes me really sad because I really think Kat Cho seems like the sweetest person ever. I love her authortube channel. Like I love her authortube channel and she just seems so sweet and I wanted to love this. This is, what is this about? We've got, I think a girl who is also a fox spirit. Oh girl, we're trying to remember a lot now. This is in the past. <laughs> There's like a romance in it as well. There's a sweet little romance. She has a difficult relationship with her mum who might also be, I'm I'm not gonna say anything because I don't wanna, I'm like, what is a spoiler or what's not? I don't think that is a spoiler, but let me just shut my mouth. So yeah, this one makes me sad because I really love Kat Cho, but here's the situation. I listened to this via audiobook again. I just didn't like the book. I found it really boring. I didn't enjoy it. I gave it two stars, finished the series, whatever. But since then, I have listened to more audiobooks narrated by that, narrator, narrator, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I haven't liked them. So I think I, I've spoken about this before, I think I have a problem with this narrator. And like, when I listen to them, I don't, like, I don't say, oh, I, I don't like how they're narrating that. Like I do, but everything I listen to them, I rate low. Even one point I was reading the Poppy Ball physically majority and I remember I switched to the audiobook and I found it so boring. And then I switched back to the physical and I liked it again. So it's obviously just an issue I have with this audiobook narrator, but I don't care enough to go back and give the sequel to Wicked Fox a go physically. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. It could just be left in the past, but now I know to not really pick up stuff by this narrator. Nothing, I mean, they're a really, really popular fantasy narrator. Like everyone else loves them. It's a me problem. It's not them. It's something about my brain and them just don't vibe. So um, yeah, Wicked Fox, maybe I would have loved if I read it physically. It's one that got away, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, another early series that I DNF'd. Then we have Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I, is it called the Skyward series? I don't know. Now this I enjoyed. I think I gave it three stars, but I was just happy to leave it as a standalone. There's not much tea here. <laughs> this is the only Brandon Sanderson I've ever read. My dad loves Brandon Sanderson. He has all the books next door and I just like have never delved into that situation. <laughs> I don't really have any bad opinions about this. This is like a sci-fi set on this earth where they're trying to get off the earth and they live underground and the girl's dad was like a traitor and so she wants to be a pilot now like he was, but no one wants her to be a pilot because he was a traitor. Blah, 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 blah. There's no tea. I would just like, we can just leave this as a standalone. I don't often do that, but like, I was just, you know, the books are long and the days are short. <laughs> Oh, okay. Next was Fable by Adrian Young. <laughs> I can't even say it. I hated it. I hated this book. I just did not enjoy this. This is like a sea book. I used to think it was a little mermaid retelling because the girl is ginger on the front and it's to do with the sea, but it's not. <laughs> it's definitely, it was definitely not. My problem with this is the majority of the book is about a romance and it's set on a ship with like maybe five characters total. I did not know any of the characters other than the two in the romance. Like all the other characters on the ship have no personality, no personality. They are cardboard, they are vanilla. Like, oh my God, that's mean, but like, it's true. This was like a one star for me and I very rarely give one stars out unless the book is offensive. This was just like upsetting to me. I just hated it. It is so bad, I wanna give you a zero, but that's not possible. So I give you a one. Adrian Young's adult debut has just come out and everyone's been really hyping it up and excited for it and loving it. And I'm just like, I don't think I should go there. 
I think just let everyone else enjoy it. And I would, because it's like a murder mystery as well. So I was like, oh, like I've got to, like maybe I've got to give it a go. But I don't. Sitting here thinking back to how Fable made me feel, I don't. I don't need to do that to myself. <laughs> Next is a controversial one, but it's An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Another one that really upset me because I loved Saba Tahir before I read this book. I listened to loads of podcasts with her on. I took, I think, a Skillshare class that she did. And I just found her so interesting the way she talked about writing and stuff. And then I just, I didn't like An Ember in the Ashes. I, I found it boring. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? I know this is a really unpopular opinion. Like I remember everyone when I gave this opinion being like, girl, maybe you should delete your channel. But I, yeah, I just found this boring. It's like t two perspective, which sometimes I don't vibe with because it was kind of dual timeline. It was like similar. We're following these two characters. One who I think is a guy who was kind of in the army and another is a girl whose family I think were like revolutionaries. I can't remember. Anyways, and it's kind of dual timeline because although it's like set in the same time, they're two different storylines we're following. And I just don't think that works for me because I just get bored with both of them because neither of them are strong enough to hold a book on their own. If they're gonna do dual timeline, you have to have been able to write a book just from that perspective. In my opinion, a lot of what's on this list really is YA fantasy. <laughs> and I'm trying to be a lot more careful with the YA fantasy that I do pick up. The next one is The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco. This was another victim of dual timeline, right? We're following twin sisters who I think don't know their twin sisters. I really like, listen, if I've done after series, it's out of my brain. <laughs> The world is split in half, one in darkness, one in light, etern eternally, because the world doesn't tilt, right? So one is always in darkness, one's in light, and they've been in those two separate kingdoms, and they've each got, like, a mission that they're going on, and so you're flicking back and forth between their perspectives, and yeah, it was just another one that I didn't love. But yeah, this was, I think, the turning point for me realising that I really don't like your timeline. This was, like, the realisation. This was the light bulb. And so since then I've read less, but you can definitely see in books I rated low before this and DNF'd that there was a lot of, of due timeline stuff. Next was a super disappointing one for me and it was Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder by T.A. Wilberg. This is probably one of my like most disappointing murder mysteries. I mean, I gave it a two and I've given like one or two murder mysteries a one star before, but this was really disappointing to me because I was so excited for it. It was a locked room murder mystery set in the 1950s with like this underground secret government organization. It set in the 1950s, but like there was nothing that said it in the 1950s other than like the occasional mention of how she had to get married and how shameful it was that she hadn't gotten married yet. There was like nothing that put me in that era. That it was all a lie. That was one of the things that annoyed me most because I love historical murder mysteries because I always feel like the historical setting lends itself to creating a vibe for the murder mystery, but this didn't. Like you could have said it present day. The thing that annoyed me was there's so much like technology in this secret government agency that we don't even have today. And so it felt like futuristic in a way, but it was 1950s. The only thing that said in the 1950s was like, oh girl, you haven't gotten married yet. Oh, you know what I mean? That was it. I didn't like the writing, didn't like the characters. The, I can't even remember how the murder mystery was solved, like what the result was, I really can't remember. This one was a huge disappointment for me. Right, then I'm like bracing myself. <laughs> Another one that I DNF'd in the series I DNF'd was These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I just didn't vibe with this. I'm not really interested, sorry. Like, I'm, I'm just not interested. To be fair, I read this when I was starting to become these latter ones or ones that maybe I think earlier on I would have continued this series, but I was becoming more aware of how many series I was actually in the middle of. And this one I was just fine living behind. This is obviously a Romeo and Juliet retelling. I think it's set in 1920 Shanghai. This just wasn't for me. I just didn't enjoy it. I remember being really bored. <laughs> throughout it. And I feel terrible, but listen, Chloe Gong has got her success. You know what I mean? Like she doesn't need me to like the book. I am one fallen soldier. She has many others <laughs> who love her stuff. When the book ended, I was just like, I have no interest in seeing where this goes. I think I gave it like a 2.5, maybe even a three. Did I give it a no? So yeah, this was just another one I was happy to leave to the fans and just step away from. Remove myself from the situation. <laughs> Remove myself from the narrative. Next, we've got two that I actually haven't unhauled because this one 
one especially, I think I gave this three stars. Um, this was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I will not be continuing on with this series. I liked aspects of this, right? I gave it three stars. I liked the writing. I think this is a good book. This is probably one of the best books on this list, in my opinion. I can see why other people love it. It's just long and I knew the sequel would be long. Like it's like tiny font. It took ages to read. And I'm like, I just don't love this enough to continue. I'm again, happy to treat this as a standalone. It had interesting magic systems. I liked the main character. I liked the journey that she went on throughout the book. I actually quite liked the love interest. You're like, Megan, why did you, <laughs> why did you DNF it if you're saying good things? I was just a bit bored and I wasn't super interested in it. I can recognize it's good aspects, but I also think I read this around the time I read a lot of five stars. And so maybe if I hadn't done that, I would have wanting to continue on with the series more. But I would give Tracy Dion a go in the future, which is not, I can't say that for a lot of authors on this list. Like when she publishes a new series or a new standalone, you know, her next book that isn't in the series, I think I will pick up and give a go. Then we have got a book that I hated, probably one of my least favorite books of this year, and that is The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. This is about these girls who are seen as demons by society and they're kind of made into like this army by the nation that they live in. This was just one where I really didn't like much about this book, which I feel terrible about because I was so excited to read it. I didn't like the writing. I didn't like the plot. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the ending. I didn't like what else? <laughs> the villain. I didn't feel like any tension was built throughout. I, I didn't like it. That's very rude, isn't it? I also remember feeling like this was young YA writing, like very young YA writing, but with very mature YA topics and uh, violence as well. So I just felt like those two were at loggerheads with one another. I don't mind younger YA writing. I don't mind more mature topics in YA, but I don't feel like those two should necessarily go together. So I just couldn't figure out who this was for either. And then we just have two more that I've DNF'd in really recent videos. The first was in my Cats Pick My TBR vlog and it's Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This one was actually a really big disappointment for me as well. This is about a girl who can't die and who can see death and she moves in with a new family because she's an orphan she's kind of passed around relatives and she thinks a murder happened right before she got there and she wants to have death's help to solve it it has a love triangle which I think I figured out isn't my thing if like the love triangle isn't equal you know it's a very gothic book I feel like if you love vibes you'll love this but I just didn't vibe with the writing again for me I think the big problem with a lot of these is the writing if I don't vibe with the writing we're not going anywhere you know and then finally one that I think surprised a lot of people this was in my last vlog that went out like two days ago so if you don't want to spoil yourself <laughs> look away but I am not continuing with the in the hall with a knife Cluedo clue mystery series I didn't dislike this I gave it three stars but again, we're up against it with the series at the moment. And I was just fine to treat this as a standalone. I think it was an enjoyable experience. I liked reading a book with clue characters in it. Yeah, you know, I enjoyed the, the theory of it, but it was just a fine mystery. And I'm just fine not knowing what happens to the characters beyond this point. You know what I mean? Like I can just leave it here. It was a fun, enjoyable experience, but I don't need to read two more of pretty much the same thing. So there we have it. That is all the book series that I will not finish that I have started. Let me know if you've read any of these. I would, you know, if you've loved any of these, let me know why you love them because I'm one person with one opinion. <laughs> I would like to hear yours as well. So let me know what you think of any of these series. If you've read them, if you GNF them as well, or if you continued with them. Thank Thank you so much for watching don't forget to go check out book of the month down below and i will see you very soon with another video bye